You may remember in October of last year, we built four SEMA show cars with Derek Jenkins of Mazda. You also may remember that Derek is holding out on us. In the basement of his studio, he has a collection of historic Mazdas. So when he and I concluded our business, I felt it prudent that I take home a couple of souvenirs. Let's start with this one. I know what you're thinking. One goes to a secret garage that has things like the 1991 Le Mans winning 787 race car, and you pull out this, a car that looks like all the other million Miatas on the road over the past 24 years. But really, it's all about the VIN here. The last six, one triple zero one five, which means it's the 15th Miata to ever roll off the assembly line. It is the first Miata to cross the Pacific and make its way to the good old US of A. In the 3,800 miles it has traveled since new, it has always been owned by Mazda. 1979 Mazda RX-7 IMSA GTU Daytona prototype. A lot of words, letters, and numbers to describe not so much a race car, but a race car and a guy. Yoshimi Katayama, this guy was a renaissance man. He started out racing motorcycles, then he decided he wanted to race cars. But not just any car, heaven forbid you race something with a reciprocating piston engine. No, Katayama-san, he wanted to race something with rotating triangles and a very small engine. But the results, they spoke for themselves. For the seven years after this car was built, Katayama-san and his teammates mopped the floor with every other team's ass, so much so that his record still stands. The Mazda RX-7 is still the most winning model in the Touring Series. Another factoid? Our friend Tommy Kendall, who now races in the American Le Mans series with the SRT Viper, he got his start, and you guessed it, an RX-7. And then there's my absolute favorite, 1967 Mazda Cosmos 110 Sport. This car is cool in so many ways, I don't even know where to begin. So let's look at the boring stuff first. Front suspension is independent with disc brakes. The rear suspension is live axle with a DD on tube and drum brakes. The interior has details like herringbone seats. And then for a Lotus guy like me, it only weighs 2,110 pounds. But that's not what makes this car important. That is. This was the first ever two-rotor serial produced sports car. And to really understand the importance of that, we need to compare it to its contemporaries. Toyota back in the day also came out with their own GT, but that car had an engine that was four times the size of the 491cc engine in this car. Now think about this. The Toyota put out 150 horsepower. This little engine, 110. And then even the Jaguar of its day, the mighty E-Type, that car put out, yeah, 265 horsepower, a lot more than the 110 here, but the engine, seven times larger. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say the outside of this car doesn't look like an Asian car. The inside definitely is the understudy of a European car, but they added some technology to it. The steering wheel, there's a bit of a knob here. You unscrew that, and then it's a telescoping steering wheel. It's got an AM FM eight track stereo system. This is very high tech for 1967. Almost like having Siri and a 16 by nine navigation screen in a car today. And then it's got a four speed manual transmission. Now this is a series one car that had the 110 horsepower engine with a four speed manual. They switched over to a series two car which had 128 horsepower and a five speed manual. But this is where it gets interesting. It's the production run of these things. Uh, the Series 1 car, they made 343 of them. The Series 2 car, they made 1,156 of those. As a basis of comparison, the Toyota total run was 337. Now, what's really interesting is how many of these made it to the U.S. The Series 2 car, six of them. The Series 1, two. So click here to watch one of our 250 other episodes. Click here to subscribe. And can we ask you guys a favor? Can you watch these within the first 36 hours? Because it gets us more views, which gets us more dollars, which gets you more episodes. And of course, follow us, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time.